Right, so let's have a look at how to copy a across some SSH keys to three of these servers here. I've put in their IP addresses. We could use host names if you have working DNS. For the purpose of demonstration, we're just going to use these IP addresses. These are three different servers. One's an Ubuntu server, one's an Alma Linux 8, and one is a 9, I believe. So the first things we want to do when we have our host file set up like this is make sure that we can connect to them. So the easiest way to do that is just do an ansible-i to say what inventory you want to use. Um, obviously, you can put this in your ansible.cfg file. Um, we're going to set an all after that because I'm going to be using all the servers and dash M, which says which module I want to use. And then we're just going to type ping. And what we'll notice when we run this actually is that I've got a couple of issues. And the issues I've got, one is we get some permission denied. We also get some... Um, authentic you know some some fingerprint stuff so we want to do a couple of things we need to either set up ansible cfg to um forget about fingerprints or we can just go ahead and ssh to the service just to sort out the fingerprints just do that let's check this server that's fine and let's set this server Perfect. So if I now was to run that, we're still going to fail. So then the, we've got a bit further in that we're just getting a permission denied. And the reason we're getting a permission denied is we're trying to log in as Toby Lock here with no password. I've got no keys on this server, so it's not going to work. So the next thing we want to do is do a dash K to be able to give it a password and a dash U for the user I'm going to use. Now this is a demo, I'm going to use the root account. You can use any account and this should work. So they've all got the same password and we can see here now that we have connected to all of these servers. They've all been successful. So we know now that we have connectivity and the reason that's important is you don't want to go through a playbook and start debugging through your playbooks um, to find out that actually you've got some connectivity issues. So now let's get on with our playbook. So we need our three dashes. We need our hosts. And we're going to set that to all. And then we're going to have our tasks. I don't know about you, but I still struggle a little bit with YAML sometimes. I, I don't like the formatting a bit, um, but we're all good. We've got it all here. So what we're going to do is we're going to be copying an SSH key. Now, if you've never used SSH keys on the command line, you can do SSH key gen like this. And this will generate you a new key. I've already got a key, so I'm not going to go and do that. But that's how you do it. You just type SSH keygen. You can do it on Windows. You can do it on a Mac. You can do it in Linux. So if I now go to users, tobylockyer.ssh, in here we'll see that I have a pub file. Now the pub is my public key. Here it is. Now this public key is what I will be putting onto other servers. Now I have a private key as well. And my private key just allows me um, to use that key to connect to servers and then match the private key with this public key, get them to match, and then you are authenticated. So this is the documentation for the authorized key module. And we can scroll down a little bit. And it's got loads of different parameters that we could use and some examples. Now, I love the Ansible examples. They're always great. The best bit is I can just take this first one. And then the last thing I need to do is just change this. So I need to make sure that it's like that. And put, <coughs> and put that in there. And now that this is set up like this, the next thing that we need to do is change the user. So the user should be root. In this example, obviously, it's never usually going to be root. It's going to be whatever user you want to put this key against. I have been having a look at the analytics for the channel. 
and 97, nearly 98% of my viewers that watch my videos have not subscribed. That really does help the channel out and ultimately I'm able to put out much better videos. Please, would you do me a favor and if you gain any value or learn anything from any of the videos that I teach, really appreciate that you would subscribe. Thank you. And now we can run that playbook. So we want Ansible playbook dash I hosts playbook you root and the reason we're using root here is because I'm this is my user um, I'm not root so it's going to try and connect via SSH as Toby Locker instead of root uh, which is what we wanted to connect to because that is what I have got set up and a dash K let's put that password in and there we go so it's set that there now if I now go and do SSH root at that I should get straight in there we go whereas before you saw when I was trying to SSH that wouldn't work now the best bit is is that I can also do this and just set it to absent rerun that playbook in fact I don't even need to do a dash k anymore because I've got that key on there okay it's taken them away now if I go and try an SSH to there I've now got to put in a password. So you can really manage your SSH keys very easily using this state of absent uh, or present. And there we have it. We've now got how to manage SSH keys in a simple playbook. So this is all well and good. We can now copy a SSH key across to one user. But if you have a couple of users, that's going to be a bit of a challenge. You don't want to have to copy and paste tasks, try and manage all of that. Um, there is a much better way of doing that. Now Ansible gives us the ability to essentially loop through things. It's something called with items and we can use it on a variable. So let's go and set a variable here called users. And then we actually need to go and set that. Now you could do it in this playbook. I don't like to, it's a little bit messy. But what we can do is in here we can do vars files which says what files have got our variables in it and we can in here have one called users.yaml we can then go and create the file called users.yaml in here we can create users and then we need to then go and set some things so what we need to set is a username toby we need to set its state, which is present, and then we need to set its key file, which is this. And let's go ahead and save that. So this variable here, which has got this array of data, we are gonna go and use. So we've got here users. Now what we need to do is start populating this not with root and present and the actual public key but actually with what's in here now before we continue I'm just going to create another one and I'm just going to have root because we already had root and we're just going to leave it like that and in here so it's going to be because we're using with items we've got access to something called item which is a variable so again we need to do this we need to do item and then whatever we have access to in here. So this uses, now we've got username, state and key file that we need. So in here is username. In here it's going to be state. Yep. And then in here, it's not a copy and paste of this. We're already inside a Jinja 2 template. We can get rid of this. And we can just do item dot key file. And that's that. So now if we go and run this playbook. So we can see here it's done it. So the root one was already there and it's added the Toby key file. So now instead of getting people to amend playbooks, you can just say, right, you've got access to this file. We just need this. So do you want 
the Toby key to be present. Maybe you want it as absent. Let's run this again. Well, we should notice it will go and actually here change stay absent. It's taken that key away. So really now all you need to do is manage this file to manage your keys. And that's a much more effective way of key management in a playbook. If you'd like a copy of this very, very simple file, I've left a link in the description and you can go ahead and download this. And I hope this video has been useful. If it has, please feel free to like and subscribe.